Hey guys, I know uh, it's been a, probably about a month and a half ago since I was going to show this at first, but I got busy with other things. And uh, this is the Intellivision I picked up I was going to show you. I already had an Intellivision, but had a chance to pick up uh, for a good deal an Intellivision that included several accessories. This is the uh, original Intellivision console, not the two or the three. This is the uh, just Intellivision 1. And then this is the Intellivision ECS. Uh, it says Intellivision Computer Adapter, but I believe the ECS stood for Expanded Computer System. And then there you have the Intellivoice. Now this also came with uh, a game, World Series Major League Baseball, uh, that was really groundbreaking breaking for the day. It had a lot of features that uh, uh, really pioneered sports games uh, when they were really just basic representations of the sport that they were trying to represent on like the Atari 2600 or the ColecoVision uh, or even on some of the early computers like the Commodore 64 and the Apple IIe. This uh, game, World Series Major League Baseball, which is really hard to find and, and pretty expensive by the way, uh, tried to recreate a telecast experience. So they really wanted to uh, create a game that gave you the the sensation that you were watching uh, a game on the TV, or at least have the same look and feel of it. And so they did that by using the IntelliVoice module for uh, voice synthesis. You have sort of a, uh, a broadcaster calling the action. Then they use the ECS with uh, extra memory to do uh, more animations and some features like picture-in-picture -picture on top of what the IntelliVision could do by itself. Didn't really use the keyboard very much. Uh, you can use it to, you know, do substitutions and things like that, as well as to, uh, you can use the whole module to save uh, your team that you come up with uh, to a tape drive, or you know, you basically just hook up a cassette recorder. But so that was kind of neat. And again, for uh, consider this is back in 1982, really impressive. I mean, again, in the context, if you look at the other baseball games available uh, on the Atari 2600 and even 5200. Don't, don't even come close to this. Again, in the context of you look at what game the baseball games look like ever since even the Super Nintendo came out, this may not seem quite that impressive. But again, 1982, uh, I remember being really blown away uh, when my friend showed me this uh, that he had on his television. So let me fire it up and we'll uh, show you what it looks like. So this is pretty unique with Intellivision games. You don't normally don't get like a musical intro. So I hit C for computer demo. And then we'll start the game. Now you hear the crowd noise. It's a little bit loud. But it was actually generated using the ECS. The ECS handed two or three more sound channels. And uh, this is what they use for a lot of the uh, uh, noise, like the uh, crowd noise and some of the the tones in the in the music that plays so watch the picture see so has well at least uh you know eight or nine frames of animation and that again coming from when you normally had maybe two or three at most uh in games on the 2600 like uh you know the basic baseball games there this really was impressive again it's very it's all single color there's not a lot of detail in the characters uh, but it's it's uh, really nice animation, and you hear the announcer calling the action. Hopefully, somebody will get a hit uh, here in just a minute, and it'll give it'll give some more uh, chance to hear the speech. And again, speech we take for granted today, but I mean, this was you know cutting edge stuff. You see, when you have a runner on the bases, it shows the picture in picture. I don't know why the uh, umpire looks like the Grim Reaper. Seems kind of odd. This pitcher can't seem to throw a strike. And he got out in front. Now, there are only two teams. There's the National League uh, All-Stars and the American League All-Stars. Now they did not have the license for the actual teams or for the players so they tweaked the names just enough so that they wouldn't get sued by the MLBPA Hi. let's 
see if somebody will get a hit here, and you can see how the fielding works. There we go. Well, I hit the gap. The computer's not doing the best job here. So, you know, kind of slow. But, uh, you know, it, it was n actually nice to have the Intellivision gamepad with the numbers because you just push the number, uh, or actually they had an overlay showing the bases. You push the base that you wanted to throw to. Come on. Strike one, one out. Strike. Hit it good. There you go. Yeah, that'll bring somebody in. Yeah, the computer doesn't uh, always do the smart thing, like running your second baseman deep into center field isn't exactly the smartest thing, so. Uh, but again, you know, when after they shipped the games, it wasn't like they could issue patches. You know, you're pretty much stuck with whatever uh, whatever code was on the cartridge. Anyway. I just wanted to share this. It's a uh, it's a cool setup. Oh, and again, there were only a few games. There were only a few games that really made use of this. Uh, with this one probably being the most notable. But uh, again, it was it, it's an interesting story about why and Mattel even released it in the first place because of a, a lawsuit over uh, advertising claims that the Intellivision would support a computer add-on. So they actually released a, a beefier computer add-on, but it was, didn't sell, and it was very expensive, and they were selling it lost. So they came up with the ECS, which was a lot cheaper to manufacture. And even though not a lot of people bought it, you know, since they were having to sell them at a loss anyway, it was uh, they preferred to just take take that loss. But anyway, that's all for now. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.